What's up, y'all? Happy Monday. Um, today is April 25th, 2022. Um, so yeah, today was pretty interesting. Um, I was at work today and I received an email from a lady by the name of Angela. And she basically said that she had some information on the Matrice Richardson case. And I honestly, when I first got it, I thought it was a troll. Um, basically, she said that Hello, my name is Angela. I came across your video on YouTube about my Therese Richardson's case. I follow the case and feel that I know who's responsible for her murder. I've reached out to detectives who were handling the case and after talking with them, they gave me the impression that the person I named is and was on their radar. I am too scared, nervous, and shy to make a video about my dealings with the suspect and police, but I know for a fact that he's the person who is responsible. I also feel that the guy used me as an alibi. I would like to meet, talk with you about this in more detail. And this was today at 8.53 a.m. while I was at work. So um, after that, I immediately wrote her back and told her um, when I get off at 2, I will be in contact with her. Um, so yeah, I was just curious to know. And so the following recording I'm going to play, and if you guys um, need the backstory on the Matrice Richardson case, uh, please feel free to watch my previously posted video, which is on my Kenny Fair, my Ferragamo Speaks TV page, which I'm debating on if I'm going to put it on my, uh, which channel I'm going to put it on. But um, yeah, so yeah, it'll be there. You can read the story or whatever. So yeah, this recording, this lady literally went into detail about everything she says specific things that no troll nobody would just make up and it's just like why would you come you know like years later and just say this information it was just too detailed so you just judge for yourself i'm gonna play the info the video and yeah you guys take a listen hey angela yeah what's up what's up okay okay i'm back so now it's recording just to let you know so okay just to um just to give an overview um i just want to if you can just give a brief summary you don't have to go into detail mm -hmm. um, of everything but just can you now that it is can you just go into like a brief just summary of everything um oh. so sorry so okay so basically um let's see here you say you were you uh initially initially reached out to dr hampton um in 2012 right Yes. Okay. And um, let's see here. Um, yeah. So just kind of just go. I'm so sorry. I, I don't want you to be too slow. Well, <laughs> yeah. I, okay. So I initially reached out to her in 2012. Okay. She was the middleman between me and the detective. For some reason, Dr. Hampton, she, yeah, well, that's my personal. But, yeah, so she was the middleman, you know, for me talking to detectives because she knew that I did not want to talk to them. And right. so, um, you know, she told me basically, ooh, they really, they're, she said out of all the tips that, you know, has come through, they're really interested in, in yours. You know, and so I said, well, what do you think I should do? I said, because, you know, I don't want to rob the family of them knowing, but at the same time, I don't trust the police. So she suggested a burner phone. Uh, for some reason, after she suggested that, I didn't hear anything from her anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2014, uh, something came over me, and it just... Not trying to sound crazy, but it was like my Teresa's spirits was bothering me. And mm -hmm. so I just started going online to, like, really see what happened. Because I didn't know, you know, watching the news, it was like uh, I knew bits and pieces. So I'm going on the on the Internet and reading all the uh, articles and stuff. I said, you know, dang, you know, let me reach out to her even more. Cause so me and her was basically for a couple of months, we were trading like, oh, well, you know, we went to a swinger party where they had a barn outside, you know, could that have been, you know, where she got found? Because I was trying to find out exactly where she was found. So right. anyway, um, you know, we did that a couple of times. She would ask me, oh, is the guy into photography? You know, stuff like that. And so it just died down. 2014 is when I decided to call the tip line. Right, to leave the tip line. 
I called the tip line, waited a couple of weeks, uh, didn't hear anything. And so I said, well, you know what, let me just, because I'm so confident from reading so much stuff, it was like, let me just go ahead and call the detective straight up. Mm-hmm. Talk to the detectives. Uh, like I said, the the one thing that stood out was them asking me, he cut me off. He said, let me ask you a question. Have this guy ever recorded you? Mm. And when he said that, I realized that, yeah, they got to know something because, the, like I said, the only time he recorded me was that, my, and, and I had dealt with him. I met him, I probably met him June or I think in June of 09. Okay. And we probably stopped dating about, let me see, 9, 10, maybe about July of 2010. Okay. So, mind you, the Monday after my trees came up missing, that was the only time he recorded me, Mm -hmm. you know, which was the only time I had a hairstyle like hers. So, you know, when the the detective asked me that, and then they eventually said, well, like I said, when I reached out to them, he asked me, are you the one that left the tip? And I said, yes. And he said, well, it means absolutely nothing without knowing who the person is. Right. But, you know, I didn't get into the, well, I thought you could leave a tip without being known, you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, eventually, you know. You said, the detective, um, you said you were, the detective was Dan McDerry? McElderry. McElderry. M-C, okay. M-C capital E-L-D-E-R-R-Y. Okay, got you. Okay. Yeah. You can continue. I'm sorry. And so, you know, once he said that, you know, you can't leave a tip without, you know, <laughs> revealing yourself, I knew that was some BS. So, you know, he said, okay, well, I'm going to go out and talk to him. I'm not going to put you on blast or anything. I'll just let him bring your name up. Mm-hmm. And so I ended up having to contact them to find out what happened. This was probably another two weeks. And they, mm-hmm. you know, just basically said, oh, yeah, we went out and talked to him. And, yeah, he did bring your name up. And that was it. That was all they told me. Okay. So, you know, that's where, you know, after that, he stopped answering his phone. As a matter of fact, the tip line stopped answering their phone. It was like, yeah. hmm, you know. So I reached out to the guy. The guy for a long time wasn't answering because I was sending a picture of my tree with, did you have anything to do with this? Uh-huh. Because at this point, I wasn't afraid because it was so much that, you know, like I told Dr. Uh, Detective McElderry, that's a lot of coincidences. Right. And this was yeah. the Monday um, after the Thursday that she went missing or that you? When he recorded me, yes. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Just yeah. to be clear. For some reason, like I said, he came and got me in the daytime. We never dated in the daytime. Okay. But he surprised me and picked me up. I was off that Monday. I think it was a holiday for the school, I think. Mm-hmm. So that's why I was at home, and then he came and picked me up. It was about 12 or 1 o'clock. We went out to Malibu, you know, the whole little stretch, just driving, taking mm-hmm. pictures, him asking people to take pictures of us. Mm-hmm. Um, he asked to take pictures. Was it more so like of, of uh, admirance, like, y'all take a picture of my beautiful, I don't know, like, was it something <laughs> like that sense, or was he just, like, happy to, like, have you around to just, I don't know, you know. Because I'm black. Uh, Yeah. Was it like that? I kind of thought that's what it was. At first, that's what I thought it was. Right. But in hindsight, you know, after I find out everything, it's like, were you trying to be seen by everybody? Mm. You know, you know, like, what was that? Mm. It, It was just a lot. We've been out before. It was just a lot. Him asking, like. I remember him asking an older white guy. I remember him asking a pregnant lady. I remember him asking a hippie girl. I mean, it was just, that was a, it was just a lot, you know. Right. But and, I, um, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say that I, after the fact, it's like, hmm, were you doing that to use me as an alibi? Mm-hmm. So that people can say, no, I, it was that girl, not that girl. You know, I don't know. Right. Cause y'all and y'all do look similar too. So um, yeah. Gonna, oh, okay. Can you uh, elaborate on the mural and like the connection with that also? 
Okay. So there uh, is a person, World World News Now, that's the person's name, mm-hmm. left about four comments. Uh, it started off like, and it was, and the person is analyzing the mural, and and really explaining the mural. You know, mm-hmm. uh, the mural has a wheelchair in it, and this particular person says, "Well, what does what they say? What does the number seven have to do with the wheelchair?" Mm-hmm. You know, and then it says something about. The 13, it said, okay, it says maybe the 13, because it's 13 pictures of a black lady. Mm-hmm. So he says the number 13 probably represents his captors or vi- or his victims or something he's saying. But mm-hmm. I'm like, damn, the fact that this person is only throwing out the number 7 and the number 13, that's this guy's birthday, July 13th. Mm-hmm. And so it goes on to analyze it and, you know, really think it. No. Oh, and then it says, oh, it looks like the person used, oh, I can't remember what it said, but it said that you can tell that the person doesn't have a high IQ. And like mm-hmm. I said, he mentioned that Monday when he came to get me, that was one of our conversations, that he was in a group called Mensa. Mm, okay. This group called Mensa, I've seen, I do watch a little crime shows here and there, and I've seen that not all of them, but they are known to ha- play a game called Clue, mm-hmm. you know, where it's, it's a murder mystery type of thing. They'll come together and, you know, play this game. Wow, okay. I really believe in my heart of hearts that if it wasn't this guy alone, it's somebody in the police station that's helping him. But mm-hmm. I know for a fact he has something to do because in the mirror also, the part where it says that the painting is, is painted upside down to the seer. And I'm like, well, whoa, I'm the seer. I'm the one who's looking at it. So let me turn it upside down. And it says that the person's name could be hidden or is hidden in the painting. Mm -hmm. I'm looking all over at this painting. I turn it upside down. True enough, I see a B, an I, an L, and an L in this Mm -hmm. painting, and that's his name. Mm -hmm. They're not going to call me. I'm only going by what the painting is saying. Mm -hmm. This is not me making stuff up, you know. Right. Me knowing him, he, he is that type of person. He do like to make it seem like he's smarter than other people. He do, like, you know, just me being around him. I can totally see him playing a game with the police. <laughs> mm. So, you know, like I said, I didn't hear anything else. Uh, Dr. Hampton had me to reach out to, oh, my God, I can't remember that detective name. I would have to think about it. No problem. Well, she had me to reach out to him. He never did respond. But, you know, like I said, I really think they know who's responsible. Right. You know, the fact that we pulled up at Joffrey's and then I'm asking him, oh, yeah, this is that place where the girl came up. Next. I didn't re- remember her name because I just saw it over the weekend. Uh-huh. And I, and so, then he didn't respond. And I said, you don't know who I'm talking about? Because I did. I got offended because I'm like, he probably trying to act like he don't know because she's black. So mm-hmm. I did get an attitude, and I was just like, let me just leave it alone because, you know, we'll be in fault out here. Right. Because don't dismiss that. Because my thing was, you work out here, you play out here. You, you and I, we talk about current events on the news. How is it mm-hmm. that you don't know about this? Right. And you said his occupation. You said he was a lifeguard at, um, what, what was it at? At that time, it was it's Point Doom, P-O-I-N-T-E, Doom, D-U-M-E, Beach. Oh, point. Okay. Point. And that was by um, close to Malibu? I believe that's within 10 minutes walking distance of the restaurant. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that's within. And, and mind you, Kenny, I did, this is stuff I did not know, or else mm-hmm. I would have connected the dots back in the 09. Back then, right. I wouldn't have waited to 2014. Mm-hmm. 
No, I understand. You know, just a lot of coincidences. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's see here. So, yeah, you pretty much discussed, was there anything else that you wanted to leave or or just state that may help? Mm, I think that's about it. Okay, no problem. So um, what I was going to ask, um, just with this information, thank you so much again. Thank you for reaching out, you know, for responding to this video um, that I, you know, put out there. I know I haven't been consistent with the videos, and I'm going to try to, you know, do more. But um, as far as, like, pursuing it, how would you, because I know you said you're just uncomfortable, you know, just coming to family and stuff. So how would you want me to pursue, you know, this? further or should I give this information to someone or to the family or what you what, what do you think I mean you really don't have to give it to the family I haven't spoke with the mother the dad I'm gonna put it to you, I my trees came up missing because I'm gonna put it to you like this even on down to Rhonda mm-hmm. to me they're all just so self-absorbed Mm-hmm. That's how she got lost because y'all, you know, they they wrote her off as being crazy, and you see how her right. mom, oh, I'll go pick her up in the morning, you know. To me, I I I'm gonna say just on Rhonda's part because she's the only one I really dealt with. To mm-hmm. me, the more they don't solve it, Rhonda is is good. Mm-hmm. You know, she's she's better off with them not solving the case. Right. Uh, and and, I, and the only reason why I say that is because when I first reached out to her in 2012, it just went nowhere. Mm-hmm. You know? And who's that is, that's, who's that again? She's the lady that was helping the family. She, Mytrice was interning for her. She's the oh, psychiatrist. Dr. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. Dr. Rhonda Hampton. Oh, Rhonda Hampton. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Okay, that's what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, and I reached out to the dad, but he wanted to text back and forth. Uh, so I said, you know what, just here's what I know. But you can take it to, you know, the police. And so when I talked to Rhonda, she's like, oh, no, you told him all of that. Now he's going to walk in there like he's a big shot. And I'm like, wait a minute, this is her dad. He can't right. know this. You know, to right. me, it's just a lot of game. I mean, it's I don't know if these people are getting money because they're not solving. I don't know what's going on, but it's like, okay. Yeah. Well, like I said, I believe it boils down to they just can't prove that this guy did it. You know, it was out there in the woods. I've been out there with him before, you know, and even after the fact, one day we were leaving and he was like, oh, you can go to sleep. You can go to sleep. And I'm like, no, I'm not sleepy. You know, it's dark out here. I'm not going to sleep, even though I knew him, but no. Right. I'm not, you know, going to sleep, but he did reveal to me that one of his friends had a pot farm, and I believe that's where she was found, close to uh, a marijuana farm. Mm-hmm. I did read something where they, um, it was an area known for um, shooting adult films and also growing marijuana. It was like a marijuana plant or something, or they were investigating, and that's how they came oh, across yeah. it. Mm-hmm. So he told me he had a friend because one day I was I asked him, can I get this? And he said, yeah, I got a friend that has a pot farm. He calls it a pot farm. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, yeah, like I said, he knows about, he knows the ins and outs out there. He knows, he knows. <laughs> That's just so many coincidences. That's just it is, crazy. and I may be missing some, but it, it's too many. It's too yeah. many. It's okay. I really, 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 really appreciate you um talking to me and like i said you can always reach out to me like i said i think what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do probably an update video um with the information this um, is what i this is what i like i said i'm just not savvy to i don't know how to share screen i don't but my thing was i was going to do a video about it discussing it and discussing the person without mentioning his name mm-hmm. but you know as i'm Showing them the the mural and the comments that was left under it by this person, and mm-hmm. you know, let the people know his birthday is seven thirteen. Mm-hmm. Uh, right here is his name. I wouldn't say it, but right here you can clearly see B I L L. 
mm-hmm. you know, and just, you know, the, all the, you know, 10 minutes away from the beach, just, you know, just really what the detectives know. Right. You know, and the detectives, if you do it, you know, detectives, you know, a young lady reached out and, you know, they asking questions that how do they know? <laughs> you know, oh. and even about the being anonymous. Why can't I be anonymous? It's an anonymous tip line. Right. Why did you have to know who I am? Because I'm probably the only witness and you guys have been waiting. Yeah. So, wow. yeah, that's all. I can just go on and on about this because I'm so, <laughs> I did not want to put myself in this, which is, I'm oh, not no, going to lie. Not- I did. I did ignore. I saw her on the news, but I said, no, no, because no, it can't be him. No, this is what I'm telling myself. Right. So, you know, I just won't. Maybe if the community comes together and put pressure on them, you know, you won't need no DNA. You won't need no. It's just common sense. This guy is pointing to this guy. Yeah. And it's just even, it's just crazy because it's like when you read the story, it's just, I don't know. Uh, it's just something about the story that just captured me. I don't know. It's just I have a sister her age and stuff like that, so it's like yeah, it's really scary. You know what I mean? And just how she was just released in the dark with no items, no phone. No, it's just I don't know. It's just weird. You yeah. know. And and another thing, the detective asked me do do he do I know if he have a police scanner? Well, hell, he's a lifeguard. Of course he. He has a radio, you know the mm. the 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 um lifeguards work under l a county fire right you know which a fire station was right there if she did walk if she did you know take the route that they said, she totally passed the fire station mm. you know right. so it's just too much it's to ignore you know right. Right, right. Well, thank you so. Thank you. I, I really appreciate this. When I, when you wrote me at work, I was got chills. I was like, let me take a break and try to get to you because, like I said, this is real important information. Then, like oh, I said, yeah. man, oh, man. <laughs> change the outcome. But like I said, if there's anything else, or you know, you have my email, you have my phone number, please reach out to me, and I'll be happy to. You know, we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm gonna send you this picture of myself that oh, you yes. took out there on Malibu that day. Okay, please send that to me. Are you going to email it or text it? Or? Uh, I'll text it to you right quick. Okay, perfect. All right, thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome, and thank you.